So I uh, can't think of uh, anybody to, better to see uh, talking about startups in San Francisco than the guy who created Rocket Space, where uh, about 150 uh, startups are incubating there. We're going to hear about what's going on and what, what he's seeing happen in the world right now. Hi, I'm Duncan Logan. I'm the CEO and founder of Rocket Space. Uh, I've been here in the Valley for, I think, eight years now. Came in from London, working in technology startups. And uh, rather than starting a new technology company, thought I'd start a, uh, a base for, for technology companies to work out of. And that's what Rocket Space is. Well, that's the uh, San Francisco way, right? Uh, instead of uh -huh. going and mining the gold, you uh, sell jeans. Become the Levi of, you, that's of the gold I miners. I know. No, it is. It is. It's, I mean, we couldn't have been luckier, I think. If timing is, uh, for every startup, timing is a great thing. And starting in January 2011, uh, we could not have been luckier with that. And then with some of our first tenants like Uber and uh, Leap Motion and these sort of people. Yeah. You're two blocks away from our office. Yeah. So, uh, uh, it, it, people always get us confused. Is it Rocket well, Space or Rackspace? I don't know. Well, this is, this is very fun because when we first started, we had a team from Rackspace in Rocket Space. And now here I am, Rocket Space and Rackspace. So it's, it's all part of the, the bigger ecosystem, which is a good thing. So what's, what, uh, you have 150 startups. Yeah. You're not uh, a Y Combinator. You're, you're mostly uh, selling space to uh, startups, right? That's right. So I think we're, um, we're focused on the space. So I, I think the, the trend that we saw was co-working moving to uh, office as a service, for want of a better term which was particularly uh, relevant for technology startups. So we are a, a, a co-working space or a, a technology accelerator. We're only for technology companies yeah. and only for companies who have raised at least one round of funding. So there is that quality bar. Um, we're strong believers that a company, a young company is like a young person. It's a product of its environment. So we try and make sure that the quality of the companies in rocket space is really high. You have a lot of competition. I, we were talking before yeah. the cameras came on that, um, uh, there's something like 50 incubators within a, a few miles or in San yeah. Francisco, right? Yeah, I think. I mean, we have one here called Geekdom, right? Yep. So we're a competition too. It's, uh, you've <laughs> become, I guess you have. But no, I think um, there's an enormous trend of this office as a service trend. You know, startups don't want to sign long leases and buy furniture and security systems and all the rest of it. They just want to use the space. So I think. Um, while we, we, at the moment, we, it feels like there's just so many of these places, I think we're still at the very early stages of what will eventually become, you know, something to the tune of five to 10% of all commercial real estate will fall into this uh, sector. So I think we're still very early, but um, yeah, I think it's a great thing for entrepreneurs. At the moment, there are, as you say, I think 54, 55 uh, different spaces that you can choose in San Francisco. Yeah, um, we were there, uh, I don't know, Three years ago, maybe. Yeah, two just ago, after we like opened. That. Yeah. Uh, what's been happening since then? What, what What have you been seeing happen in the San Francisco uh, ecosystem? So, in the in the co working accelerator space, I think the quality of everything has moved forward leaps and bounds. Um, you know, when when we started, as long as you had some furniture and Wi Fi, that's all you needed. Now the customer's expectation is, you know, twenty four seven, full redundancy, far better furniture. You know, everything's moved forward, which is which is a good thing. With regards to the startup community, I think it's kind of slowed down, or I think it's stabilized. I think when we started in January 2011, 2011, 2012 just seemed to be meteoric growth. Every, everything seemed to um, you know, just be everywhere you turn. I think we were having 45, 50 applications a week from startups to get into rocket space. Now that's down to about 30, which is still a lot and still kind of gives you an idea of the scale of San Francisco and the startup community. But it seems to be a li little bit more sensible now. Obviously, we're now seeing some of the companies that have come through Rock Space hit big numbers. Uber talking about 16, 17 billion valuation. Yeah, Leap Motion's done uh, crazy well. Uh, Zappos, uh, you know, there's just Practice Fusion, Achievers. There's just, uh, we actually have a, uh, an infographic, which is I think five companies now have come through Rocket Space have hit a billion dollar valuations or more. Um, the companies in there have raised over three billion dollars in combined funding in the yeah. first three years. I mean, those numbers are staggering. Yeah, um, and this is a trend not just in San Francisco, right? uh, 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 in New York, and uh, we, yeah. uh, we were just in Tel Aviv, and 
London, there's uh, co-working spaces that are popping up and doing quite well, right? I think, I think there's two things. I think there are natural technology clusters forming in cool cities. Yeah. And we say that... Um, Austin. Austin, being, yeah, Austin, New York, Seattle. Seattle, Seattle yeah. It's, it's a smaller environment, but Tel Aviv for sure, London, Amsterdam, Berlin, Beijing. Um, Beijing, uh, yeah. Beijing's um, one we don't really see much because I, there's, they're the companies that are serving the internal Chinese yeah, market, and but really important companies. China is fascinating to me. What's going on behind, what we don't know about in China is kind of probably more than what we do, don't know about. It's just incredible economy and um, you know we're starting to see them come across and, and snap up uh, uh, US companies. I think that's gonna go on. Um, but yeah, there's there's been a, a great march forward in, in, in what we're seeing with the startup community. But I think technology is an educated person's game. Educated people are the most mobile population of any uh, society, and they will move and live and work in cool cities. Yeah. So that's why these places are taking off. Uh, that's true. So what, are you seeing a, uh, a trend in terms of the kinds of companies that are coming through your door since, since you're uh, seeing 30 companies a week? Yeah, we're, I'm, uh, we're kind of, um, Rocket Space is a business, we, we still have a lot of small startups. We also have larger startups, or what we call, you know, people like Supercell and Hootsuite and these sort of guys, you know, which are, are more a division of a startup coming to work in the Valley. And I think uh, that is a trend we see a lot of company. You may, might be a, a great company based out in New York, but you still need to have a, a team in the Valley or yeah. in San Francisco. We saw PR, that with sales. Ex exactly, money. or a bit of dev or, or whatever. And yeah. I think that innovative tech, um, a person asked me this morning about, you know, do I think this is all going to head to India? And I think India in places is great for scaling out stuff, but the actual creativity, the innovation technology will still happen here or in one of these tech clusters. Um, so yeah, we're seeing as many bigger companies look at Rocket Space as an option as we do. So you're not the like the, the, the old uh, dog patch labs where Instagram started. They kicked people out after I think they got to eight employees or 10 yeah. employees. No, we'll, we'll take companies. I think our, our largest five companies have an average of 40 people. So we'll, t yeah. we'll allow companies to stay up to about 100 people now. Um, once we get more real estate, we'll, we'll push that number up. But um, it's no, I think Rocket Space used to be a stepping stone to getting your own office. And now I think more and more companies are seeing it as, a, as a, an office for life, an office until they get acquired or until they uh, IPO or you know, really start scaling out. You guys, what, how much do you charge per person? At first um, so it's a per person per month, uh, typical sort of model, and it ranges from sort of $750 a month up to about $1,000 a month. Okay, so you're a little bit more expensive than some of them. Yeah. Um, do you, do you uh, see the same kinds of societal problems affecting startups uh, where the cost of living here is, just keeps going up and up? Because the wealth that is yeah. being generated here is I, going up. I am at the moment considering buying a house in San Francisco, and it's, it's you know when you hear of houses getting fifty bids and thirty of them being all cash bids, and that's for a you know one point seven million dollar home or something. It's just you think how can you compete in that space? Um, we are very focused on on transport and communication lines. I think more and more people. I think San Francisco. I think we're at a thousand dollars a square foot here. You know, you compare that to New York, where it's twenty-three hundred dollars a square foot. So we've still got a long way to go until we get to a sort of Manhattan style. But I think, without a doubt, more and more people are going to be coming in on BART or train or you know other communicate ferry, other communication yeah. ways to get into work here. I think there's always going to be this dynamism for wanting to be here. But yeah, it's it's getting really hard um, uh, for for workers to afford it. One thing I've noticed uh, Google doing in London and Tel Aviv, they have these campuses where they take a, a floor of an office yeah. building and give it to the community and have a bunch of events there and, and uh, just try to create good feelings in the community. It helps with recruiting, helps with their uh, standing in the community and stuff like that. Uh, are, are you noticing the same thing happening with yeah. Rocket Space? I, I think it's a really good thing. You know, I think big companies... I think Google does it for a couple of reasons. Um, and, and other companies are also... I mean, we see lots of companies opening accelerators and offering free space. I think um, there is a trend towards entrepreneurism. Um, you know, there's less of this drive of leaving university and wanting to go and work for a big company automatically. 
And so the big companies are going to have to compete for that talent. And the startups are competing for the talent, the big companies are competing. And if they can keep themselves young and fresh and, and vibrant by having that sort of energy going on, on in the office, um, they'll, they'll offer it. Um, I think that is it's a competitive space, not really to what Rocket Space is doing. Yeah. But yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of. Well, I haven't done one in San Francisco yet, but you know, clearly they're learning how, how, yeah. to, how to do these community spaces. It's, it's really hard uh, to work out what the large companies are doing. I mean, they've all now come up, except for, except for I don't think Facebook has an office in San Francisco yet. But Google, Yahoo, you know, they're all realizing that this is where the young talent is. And if they don't have some sort of outpost here, um, it's going to be hard to attract that talent into the company. Um, I think I wouldn't be surprised if Facebook makes a big splash in San Francisco. And, you know, eventually, I know Mark loves Palo Alto and loves keeping that community together. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the more pressure we see getting put on Google buses and stuff like that, if they, they don't just move up here and... and put a campus in. Yeah. Salesforce is opening a big tower, right? You know, it's Salesforce tower. That's, um, uh, what's that? Two million square feet or something they've taken. And uh, I heard that Salesforce is trying to hire 5,000 people this year, yeah. um, which I hope is not all in San Francisco because they're, yeah. they're, well, they're there goes another tower. problem. They built a tower in London too, or, uh, or took yeah. over one. So, you know. um, but yeah, I mean, they've, um, they've obviously gobbled up a lot of the, the real estate that's been built. I mean, you, just look around this area and there's tower cranes everywhere but they've taken up a lot of it but um, yeah I think uh, you know it was an interesting decision for them to stay downtown um, I think that was a kind of peer peer pressure that everyone said listen we don't want to move out to uh, out to uh, towards yeah. Candlestick and they wanted to be here yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do you feel that pressure to, to bring rocket spaces to other places in the world um, yeah, we do. We're definitely looking at it. I think um, I kind of describe the period that we're in at the moment as our Ray Kroc years. You know, uh, we're still fine tuning the model, but once we feel we've got that model right, uh, we'll we'll start to take it out to yeah. put campuses elsewhere. What, um, what else do you do for startups? Because you you do events and yeah. you, you have a cool space. So yeah, I mean, our whole thing is to whatever we can do to help the startups accelerate, go faster is, is key for us. Uh, we have uh, Rocket U is our education business, which is it's actually one of the, probably the most exciting part of our business at the moment. This is doing a developer boot camp. Uh, again, there's a lot of people in that space, but we feel yeah. we have a really unique offering that you're you're doing the boot camp surrounded by 150 leading startups who are all growing like mad, desperate for for talent. So that's a, a good hiring opportunity, and we're using a company called Yeti HQ, who are one of the leading uh, Python consulting shops here in San Francisco to do the teaching. So it's real world uh, teaching. So that's, that's a, a boot camp. It's churning out students into the ecosystem, which is, you know, there's a, there's a shortage, a severe shortage yeah. of students. Our other business, uh, Rocket X, is all to do with the corporates. So increasingly, we see corporates coming, wanting to engage with startups. Yeah. And there's 101 companies and uh, people out there who tell corporates, oh yeah, we can introduce you to startups and so forth. But yeah. um, I There's think- There's a lot of R&D labs. I, I visited yeah. uh, Mercedes-Benz R&D lab here, and uh, you know, you just would go around and you, you see so many, uh, Samsung moved an R&D yeah, team Yeah, we work with them a lot, yeah. yeah. So I think the R&D, what, what we're doing is doing a sort of, we have a team of um, analysts who are scanning about 30,000, 35,000 startups now all around the world. And they're feeding their results into the lab. So we feed into Samsung, we feed into you know, Pearson or ABM Bev or so forth. Um, and then we're, we're making those introductions, but we're doing the kind of ground up uh, uh, feeding. But yeah, I mean, every, we do probably 10 corporate tours a week uh, at Rocket Space, just these corporations wondering how do they keep up with the innovation. Um, so uh, innovation is their immune system, someone said to me the other day. I thought it was a really, uh, really good way to look at it from a corporate. Yeah. Um, you've got to stay relevant. Are you seeing any other um, meta trends uh, you know, in terms of who's getting funded or what kinds of things are getting <coughs> Yeah, we, we, we it used to be a lot clearer. I mean, we saw the whole Groupon trend when everyone was doing daily deals back in yeah. 2011. We saw the... Uh, you know, crowdfunding platforms and a lot of those kind of come through. I think the Internet of Things is uh, 
super interesting from lots of, there's more and more people with little hardware devices and bits yep. and pieces around the office. And I think sooner or later, we'll have to put in some sort of lab for them to actually physically solder stuff and build stuff. Yep. Um, so I think that's a really interesting trend. I think uh, Bitcoin, not, not so much from the currency, but from the platform uh, style, there's lots of people doing interesting tie-ins to that. I think Facebook has still got a long way to go. There's a ton of companies building on the back of Facebook. I know you were at the yep. F8. Yeah. Uh, thing the other day, and um, I'm I'm super bullish on on what they can do. Um, so there's there, the existing platforms. If you look at Facebook, look at Twitter, look at you know Salesforce. There's there's people building a lot more on yeah. the back of that. They never expect to be the full company themselves. They just expect to be a component part. I think. Um, so um, yeah, that's uh, and and the trend of how billion has become the new. Million, I, you know, yeah, yeah. I can remember the first company being valued at a billion. It was like, wow! And now, you know, now if you don't make like, it, if you now seems you, like every two weeks we hear about exactly, it. exactly. If you say I want to build a billion dollar company, it feels like you're kind of underachieving, yeah. <laughs> <You> need, <laughs> lacking, lacking a you need a ten billion dollar yeah, company. lacking passion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's going to be uh, VC's new talk. We yeah. don't, you know. Well, right now it seems like uh, they're uh, advising their startups get profitable or sell. Uh, because hard time, the, the the rumor is hard times are coming. I don't know if you're hearing the same thing. I that's the first time I've I've heard it, but no doubt I'll hear it a dozen times this week. But no, I I uh, I think it's a one way to motivate uh, yeah. the, these entitled startup entrepreneurs to get get in line a little bit. You know? I, I wasn't well. It's just to be efficient with cash. I mean, I wasn't yeah. hearing the the dot com boom and. Um, you know, sure, you look at all the charts and people say, well, this is where real estate is now, this is where it was in the boom, this is where pricing of, you know, these sort of jobs were and this is where it is now. So we, we're certainly back up in that, that space. But I think, um, you know, there are company, there are startups producing enormous amounts of cash. There are corporations sitting on enormous amounts of cash. Yeah, I mean, Apple and Google. Yeah, yeah Apple. exactly. The government has pumped in an enormous amount of cash into the economy. And um, it would need to be, I don't know what it would be, it would need to be some severe uh, change somewhere to, to kind of take the steam out in the next, you know, within the next 18 months or, or yeah. so. I think, you know, it's hard to see, uh, this might be the famous last words, uh, but it's hard to see where this, uh, this is going to go wrong in the next two to three years. And I think yeah. a lot of America still feels that it's not really out of recession. No. You know, we've been booming here for you know, four years and New York's booming, but a lot of other places across the world are, are you know, you go to Spain or Greece or, you know, a lot of Europe does certainly uh, does not feel. Unless you have tech startups, you're, uh, you're, uh, you're going to be feeling, uh, still feeling uh, yeah. hurt, economic hurt, because manufacturing jobs have disappeared and gone to China or gone somewhere else, right? Yeah. And, uh, and, and that next wave, you know. That drove the middle class. There's not a good middle class wow, right that's now. A, that's yeah. a big problem. Yeah. yeah, the you know who's going to buy the goods and services if, if we keep destroying the middle class? Um, but yeah, I mean how that how that turns around and manufacturing has gone abroad, and then you hear of Tesla now is uh, you know the biggest car manufacturer here in California, and, and they're looking for enormous expansion and growth, and you know things do go around. What, what comes around goes around, sort of stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah, I I I. Uh, I feel that if things had kept going as they were in 2011, 2012, we just couldn't have, we couldn't have kept up. But I actually feel things have, have settled down a bit and we're just seeing more, more cash that's been sitting on the sidelines being deployed into profit making. I mean, uh, you know, the guys buying into Uber or whatever that round gets done at, there's, a, there's an organization, a company producing a lot of cash. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think that's a, that's a, a sensible bet. Very cool. cool. Where, do, where do we uh, follow you? Rocketspace.com or? Uh, yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Rocketspace.com. Yeah, rocket-space.com. Uh, that's where uh, everything's based at the moment or at Duncan Logan on Twitter. Yeah. But uh, no, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for coming by. Good to see you. Great. Cheers. Thanks for what you do for entrepreneurs. It's, uh, this, I couldn't have a better passion of a job. I mean, if, if your passion is tech, doing what I do is like, it's, it's not work, which is, uh, I love it.